Okay, folks, this one's really Christmassy for Christmas Day. So, and it's totally a, a totally a far cry from the kind of Christmas I typically have and am having this year. Because Christmas is a very, for some people, is a very lonely part of the year, time of year. You don't always get what you want. Not just presence-wise, but socially, economically. Um, I don't feel a sense of real Christmas Christmasiness in my life at this stage. I'm not with my partner Luigi. I'm trying to find him, I'm trying to get on the six o'clock news, and I have to. I just feel a strong urge to keep making these demos to keep producing and to keep making instead of just doing nothing about it. I'm using even Christmas Day of all days to get my work happening, my stuff happening. And let's see what we have. We have here this again, our, our go-to for this year at least. Maybe next year if I'm still stuck alone in this place. And this is what we're photocopying, folks. It looks like a real happy looks quite desolate. That doesn't look like there's many people there, but it looks very family-ish and warm apart from that. And it looks really very family-ish and warm. Uh, and that's nothing what I've got here. Yeah, that's come up looking really strange, actually. That looks really quite interesting. I uh, don't know if I like the... I don't know which way I'm going to use it for. Um, but it looks really interesting, folks. <laughs> I don't know which way I'm going to run it, though. Um, maybe that's going to be the centre of the job, because the rest of it has to sort of blend in with it. But yeah, Christmas is not a very, has been a very un-Christmassy thing for quite some time. I don't feel a sense of uh, real festivity in my time at Christmas time. I really don't feel a sense, yeah, the festivity doesn't seem to happen in my life. It really isn't something I feel a great deal of, this uh, festivity that people like to talk about and to espouse and broadcast it's all over the tv it's all over everything and it's like if you're not one you feel like you're a bit out of kilter when you're one of those people that doesn't celebrate and yes i am a christian i am a christian folks an unchurched christian so i don't get to partake in the um in the christian fellowship that i could be having because I don't fit in. I don't fit in with the church. Um, I don't fit in, folks. I don't feel like I belong in the uh, Christian church because people in the church think I'm too obsessed with photocopiers to be a Christian and I, they won't allow me to be treated like I'm one of the, tr the believers. They treat me like I'm an unbeliever and they'll say things like, oh, I'll pray for you. And I think at first when they say that, they're meaning, oh, we'll pray for you that, that you're going to go, go well in life, you know, that you're, you've got big things happening and sort of, you know, we'll pray for those big things in life, you know, that you've got a future. But then, they, then, you, then you find out they're really meaning, oh, we'll pray for you because you're not a Christian. You, you're, they don't say it like that, but you know it. You know it they're talking about and it really hurts my feelings and it's like a slap in the face almost so I don't 
to avoid the severe eff offen offensiveness that I feel, I just don't go to church. That's it, final. Boom, boom. I don't go to church. So I, I avoid being offended. I avoid getting angry, feeling in insecure. So I don't go to church. The culture of church is all about being namby-pamby and watered down. That the Christian faith is supposed to be like, in their eyes, about being watered down. Even the music in church is really watery and insipid at best. And you can tell. And they don't have the passion. They're not talented enough. They're not passionate enough. So therefore their music sounds really watered down and namby-pamby. And it really is quite... Uh, disconcerting uh, and you just you know you can't do a good job with something by being by being moderate you've got to be passionate you've got to have drive you've got to have power in it that looks really quite interesting but I think we're going to do a uh, some more switcheroos but basically they don't seem to have the passion and the drive any any more at church. They they seem to think that you have to be. We're going to do full four segmented piece. We're going to do we're going to do four combinations here of switcheroo. But basically, getting back to the message, um, basically, they seem to think you have. To, they think that to worship God, their God, what they believe is their God, you have to be wishy-washy with everything else you, you, you're not wishy-washy with with god right with being a christian with, with believing in jesus that he died for you on the cross they don't believe in being yeah it's good it's good to be passionate about that that's the center that's the central theme for the christian life is to be passionate about jesus but at the same time you've got to be passionate about what gifts you have what gifts you can bring to the table what talents you know, you shouldn't water down your talent, you know, just because you feel that you're not focusing supposedly on on Jesus. You know, you're not focusing, but you can. You can focus on Jesus and have your passion. That's the way it's supposed to be, folks. But the church doesn't understand it like that anymore. They don't believe in it. You have to be watered down. You have to water your, water down your talent. So your music comes out sounding watered down and old, a bit dusty perhaps, a bit mouldy, if, if, if I must describe some of the congregational type music that you hear. It's not passionate, you know. If you're a fucking musician, you should be fucking doing gigs and shit and making, as well as playing in the church. You know, you've got to be passionate about what you're doing, otherwise you're not going to make it. I'm, I believe I have to redesign the photocopier from scratch. And photocopiers are like physics 101 in a box. And if you can't be passionate about redesigning the photocopier, how are you supposed to do it? It's going to be tiring. It's going to be hard work. It's going to require your brain to work overtime. You have to be passionate about photocopiers in order to redesign it and make it ec ecologically friendly, make it good for the, good for the human who's using it. The um, the operator, you know, the yeah, you know, we've got to keep be passionate. You know, the hardware, the software has to be made to serve mankind and not to as little as possible ruin the planet, make the planet clean and green and, and sustainable. You know, and restrict, stop people from being obsessed with the love of money. You know, you can't love money, folks, but basically. I need to be into the photocopiers, folks, because if I'm going to redesign this sucker, it's going to require a, a mammoth effort, and I really feel that it has to be done because the planet needs needs my help, and I can't do this if I'm just namby-pamby about it like the musicians typically are at church, although I haven't been to church for a few years. I'm pretty sure not much has changed in the church because they are pretty namby-pamby and watered-down type people. And the culture that's the culture of church, I'm afraid. So I have to break away from it and just worship with Luigi if I can get in touch with him. And that's come up looking really treat. I think we can now call this demo. Quits.